today I'm going to read and sequence the events from this passage called The Watsons. Mr. Watson liked to tinker with things. He had a workshop in the garage where he kept a lot of tools. And when he wasn't building something or fixing something, he was taking something apart and trying to make it better. Mrs. Watson hated it when her husband tried to make improvements to things around the house that were not broken. When she went to the garage one day and found that he was looking carefully over her hairdryer, she got angry. Do you remember when you improved the dishwasher and we ended up getting our kitchen walls power washed, she demanded. Do you remember when you improved the microwave and I put a steak into defrost and it disintegrated? Don't worry, Mr. Watson said, waving her away. This will be great. The next morning, when Mrs. Watson got up to get ready for work, she took the sh she took a shower. She put on her robe and she went to do her hair. There was her hair dryer on its rack, looking the same as it always did. She sighed with relief, picked it up, and turned it on. The hair dryer roared to life and began to shimmy in her hand. Mrs. Watson screamed and let go. But the hair dryer had so much power that it didn't fall. It hovered in the air and began to move forward. Mrs. Watson ran and the hair dryer began to chase her around the house. Mr. Watson heard the commotion and came running. He saw the hair dryer bearing down on Mrs. Watson, who was getting tired after her fourth lap around the living room. He hurried to the bathroom and yanked the plug from the wall. The hair dryer suddenly stopped and fell lifeless to the ground. Mrs. Watson was so furious she couldn't even speak. That afternoon, she called Goodwill, and they came and picked up all of Mr. Watson's tools from the garage. Mr. Watson sat on the front stoop and watched the truck pull away. But he wasn't sad. He had a backup toolbox stashed under the porch, and he had an idea for how to improve his electric garage door opener. That was a goofy story. <laughs> So now we're going to sequence the events in the story, and this one's actually set up a little differently. Instead of sequencing all the events in the order that they happened, it breaks it down into different events, and we just have to figure out what happened next. So these aren't necessarily in the order that it happened, but we just need to find like the, uh, the starter sentence and then give an event that happened after it. So, for example, number one says Mr. Watson looks at his wife's hair dryer. We're going to go find that in the story and then figure out what event happened right after he looked at the hair dryer. So, when he looked at the hair dryer, that had to be towards the beginning of the story because most of the story occurred when Mrs. Watson was running away from the crazy hair dryer. So, before the hair dryer was attacking, he had to look at it and decide he wanted to improve it. I'm going to look maybe towards the beginning. Maybe about right here. Mrs. Watson hated it when her husband tried to make improvements to the things around the house that were not broken. When she went to the garage one day and found that he was looking carefully over her hair dryer, she got angry. Oh, there it is right there. Looking carefully over her hair dryer. So now we just need to figure out what event happened immediately after. In this case, we can just look at the end of the sentence. Sometimes you have to look at the next sentence to see what happened next. So he was looking carefully for her hair dryer, and then what happened? She got angry. So we can go over to here. And we can write. So it says, Mr. Watson looks at his hair dryer, his wife's hair dryer. We can say next. Mrs. Watson got angry. Mrs. Watson got angry. And now I move on to the next sentence. It is, Mrs. Watson hates that her husband is always trying to improve things around the house. We need to figure out what happened next. So we'll go back to here, to the passage, and we're going to find where it talks about how Mrs. Watson hated it when her husband tried to make improvements. And if you notice, improve is in little quotation marks. And that just means that he says he's improving things, but she doesn't think so. So we're going to go back and look for where it talks about Mrs. Watson 
but in like the improvements. And again, just like our last one, that happened towards the beginning of the story because, like I said, the rest of the story is mainly Mrs. Watson running away from her crazy hair dryer. <laughs> so we're going to continue looking in this first paragraph again. So let's see, Mr. Watson liked to tinker with things. He had a workshop in the garage where he kept a lot of tools, and when he wasn't building something or fixing something, he was taking something apart and trying to make it better. Mrs. Watson hated it when her husband tried to make improvements to things around the house that were not broken. Aha! Mrs. Watson hated it when her husband tried to make improvements. So now we need to figure out what happened after that. On our last one, we could just look at the end of the sentence, and it gave us an event. In this one, the end of our sentence just says, to things around the house that were not broken. That's not really an independent event that goes along with Mrs. Watson not liking what her husband was doing. So we'll look at the next sentence. When she went to the garage one day and found that he was looking carefully over her hair dryer, she got angry. So, Mrs. Watson hated that he made improvements, and what happened next? She found Mr. Watson in the garage with her hair dryer. If we can go over here, let's think about how we can shorten that. We can maybe say, Mr. Watson took her hair dryer. Because it says, Mrs. Watson hates that her husband is always trying to improve things around the house. Next, Mr. Watson took her hair dryer. And that's when things went crazy. Took her hair dryer. Our next one says, Mrs. Watson gets up, takes a shower, and puts on her robe. And what happens next? So this is right before her hair dryer went crazy. So we need to figure out what happened right after she put on her robe. So we'll go here and so it's probably maybe towards like the middle-ish of the story because the beginning is when she caught Mr. Watson working on her hair dryer and the end is when she was being chased. So the middle is going to have to be around when it started. Don't worry, Mr. Watson said, waving her away. This will be great. The next morning when Mrs. Watson got up to get ready for work, she took a shower, she put on her robe, and she went to do her hair. Oh, I heard it. She put on her robe. Now we need to figure out what happened right after she put on her robe. We need to think about, can we look at the end of the sentence, or do we need to look at the next one? The end of the sentence says she went to do her hair. That could be an, uh, an event that can be said by itself. She put on her robe, and then she went to do her hair. We could put that. Mrs. Watts gets up, takes a shower, and puts on her robe. Next... She went to do her hair. She went to do her hair. Now our next one says Mrs. Watson turns on her hair dryer. Now that is probably going to be right after the last one we just found was because she went to go do her hair, so she's going to turn on her hair dryer. We're going to go look around the same area. So we have the next morning when Mrs. Watson got up to get ready for work, she took a shower, she put on her robe, and she went to do her hair. There was her hair dryer on its rack, looking the same as it always did. She said with relief, picked it up, and turned it on. That right there is when she turned it on. Now what happened next? That's the end of the sentence. We have to move on to the next one. The hair dryer roared to life and began to shimmy in her hand. So maybe we can say as the next event, the hair dryer came to life. The Hair dryer came to life. Now our next one, we have Mrs. Watson drops the hair dryer. 
and think about when did she drop the hairdryer? It was right after it came to life in her hand because when she dropped it and I started chasing her around. So we're going to find where she dropped it. So right here is when she picked it up and turned it on. The hairdryer roared to life and began to shimmy in her hand. Mrs. Watson screamed and let go. Ah, there we go. So it doesn't specifically say that she dropped it, but she let go of it and that's when it caused it normally to drop or fall. Now what happened next? Again, this is at the end of the sentence, so we're going to look at the next one. But the hairdryer had so much power that it didn't fall. So what happened after she tried to drop the hairdryer? The hairdryer didn't fall. The hairdryer didn't fall. And now finally we have Mr. Watson sees what the hairdryer is doing. So that happened after she was being chased around by the hairdryer because she ran laps around the living room and then Mr. Watson came in and saw what was happening. So we're going to look maybe towards the end. Not the very, very end because at the very, very end is when they gave away all the stuff. But maybe like it was a paragraph before. Mr. Watson heard the commotion and came running. Oh, well there it is right away. Now what happened next? He saw the hair dryer bearing down on Mrs. Watson, who was getting tired after her fourth lap around the living room. He hurried to the bathroom and yanked the plug from the wall. So after Mr. Watson sees what the hair dryer is doing, what did he do? He unplugged it. He unplugged. You could say it or the hair dryer. I'm just going to say it because I don't really have room to write under this line because I'm on the computer. And there we go. That's kind of how you can go about doing this sort of sequencing assignment. I think this one's easier to find the events maybe one at a time because sometimes they're not quite in order. And then like the last few on this on this one, they kind of went in line with each other. So after we found maybe like number three, it led us right to the next one, and that led us right to the next one after that. So I think doing them one by one makes it a little easier to keep it organized, but you pick your strategy and do what works for you.